Hello everyone. So today I will be explaining how to create a machine learning model for classifying if a person has heart disease or not. So we'll start off by importing the necessary modules. We'll require pandas, numpy, seaborn and matplotlib for visualization. We'll be creating a model using random forest classifier. So we need to import sklearn. A few metrics like a confusion metrics and accuracy score. And also we'll be pl plotting the ROC AUC curve. Then I'll import the data set pd.read underscore csv. I'll import the data set as df. Using the dot head function, I'll show the first five rows of the data set with all the columns. We can see that there are 14 columns, but some of the column names do not make sense and there is an ambiguity. For example, CP is chest pain and it assumes values 1, 2, 3, and 4. It's a discrete variable. Tress PPS is the resting blood pressure, which is a continuous variable. And FPS is the person's fasting blood sugar. In order to remove the ambiguity, I'll be renaming the columns. So for CP, I'll be renaming it as chest pain type and tress PPS as resting blood pressure. Similarly, I'll be adopting this for all the columns. Now, using the dot d types attribute, I will find the data type of each of the columns. Uh, we can see that most of them are int except for sc underscore depression, but all the columns are of numeric data type. Then I'll be visualizing the heat map with the correlation metrics. I'll be doing this in order to check if there are any features which are highly correlated in order to remove them to create a better machine learning model. So I'll use Seaborn's heat map in order to do this. First, I'll create a subplot. The first argument will contain the correlation metrics. I'll set the annotation as true in order to get the Pearson's correlation value. The line width is set to 0 0.5 and the formatting as 0.1f to get the first decimal place. So this is how the correlation metrics along with the Pearson's correlation value looks like. We can see that there aren't any highly correlated features to be removed. Now I'll be producing a few violent plots to see if there are any outliers in the data set. Outliners prevent the model from learning the data well and hence it has to be removed. So violent plot is done for continuous variables. So we can see that resting blood pressure, cholesterol, and maximum heart rate achieved are all continuous variables. So I'll be plotting the violent plot for this using Seaborn. So the first argument will be the series that we want to plot, and the second argument will be the data frame. So we can see that resting blood pressure does not have any outliers. Same as for cholesterol and maximum heart rate achieved. Hence, there are no outliers that need to be removed. Then I'll proceed in making the model. But before that, we need to split the data set into testing and training. The test size is 30% with the random state set to 42. The first argument will contain the data frame with the target column dropped. And the second argument will contain the series target. So this is the training data set and this will be the target variable of the training and the testing data set. We'll be using random forest classifier in order to create the model for this with a maximum depth set to 5 and I'll be fitting this model to the training data set and the target variable of the training data set. Now this model which has been trained will be set to the testing data set to create a prediction. After this, I'll be creating a confusion matrix. The first argument of the confusion matrix will be the testing data set. Now I'll be creating a confusion matrix and the first argument of the confusion matrix will be the target variable of the testing data set. And the second variable will be the predicted target variable. I'll also create a heat map which shows the percentage of true positive, true negatives, false positive, and false negatives. So these, this is true 
negative and this is true positive. So in order to get the percentage, I'll be dividing it by the sum of the confusion matrix. I'll set the annotation as true in order to show the percentage. The formatting is set to 0.2 percentage to get two decimal places and the color code is set to blues. I'll also print the accuracy score and the first argument will be the testing data sets target variable and the second argument will be the predicted target variable of the testing data set. So this is how the confusion matrix looks like. So we can see the false positives and the false negatives. Uh, the accuracy has come up to be 84.61 which is pretty good. Now I'll be plotting the AUC and ROC curve. The AUC ROC curve is a performance measurement for classification problem at various threshold settings. ROC is a probability curve and AUC represents the degree or measure of separability. So it tells us how much the model is capable of distinguishing between the classes. So a higher AUC indicates that the model is good at predicting zeros as zero and ones as one. Since this is a binary classification, we need a higher AUC value. And it is said that an AUC value about 0.9 is considered to be an excellent model and 0.8 to be good. So I'll create the AUC ROC curve, but before that I will create the probability estimates for one, which is instantiated to this variable. I'll also find the false positive rate and the true positive rate which is basically the sensitivity and one minus specificity. So the ROC curve is uh, applied to the probability estimates and not for the predictions. Now I'll be plotting this. For that, I'll set the line style to hyphens and the size to 0.3. I've also set the limits from 0 to 1 for both the x-axis and the y-axis and the font size to be 12. I've also set the titles and the labels for both the axes. So we can see that the model is performing very well. Uh, and the AUC score has come to be 0 0.91 and as mentioned, a score about 0 0.9 is considered to be an excellent model. So by using random forest classifier, we will be able to classify if a person has a heart disease or not.